Tom here from Orange Systems, and I want to talk about VPN scaling with PFSense. The advice on this page is intended to help firewall administrators handle increased VPN volume, both in terms of throughput and number of connected users. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button up at the top. If you want to support this channel out in other ways, there's some affiliate links down below that give you deals and discounts on products and services that we talk about on this channel. VPN scaling. I've got plenty of videos on PFSense, plenty of videos on VPNs of PFSense, and the documentation the folks at Netgate provide is outstanding if you weren't aware. This is right from their website, so you're hearing it from the people who make the software, and they also sell appliances that run PFSense. They have an entire hangout that breaks down a lot of videos uh, on their YouTube channel as well, covering all kinds of details about it. But I wanted to cover some finer details with the high demand here in March of 2020 on VPNs and people working from home that a couple things that you can do to tune to get the most out of your VPN. First is no PFSense limits. This seems to be a popular question when I've done videos is PFSense, does it have a limit? How fast can it go? Well, your only limitation is the hardware environment. There are no artificial limits to limit the number of connections. Uh, that you have number amount of speeds you can get. It's all really limited to how fast is your internet provider and how fast is the hardware that you have running it. And they do have a list of specs, when, like I said, with the NetGate appliances and what to expect on there. Second, IPsec is faster. I talk a lot more about OpenVPN because most of the time we're dealing with users who need to remote in to get to work. And we ourselves uh, use OpenVPN here at Lawrence Systems so my remote workers can get into our local network here. It's an excellent product, but IPsec is so faster. So uh, for now, in March of 2020, this is still going to be the case, uh, you know, just FYI. So everything has a, a date on it because, you know, if they have a new version of any one of them, the things could change or different VPN services that come out. But IPsec does not cut through NAT very well. So there are challenges if the user is behind a NAT. IPsec may be less than ideal, which is why we use OpenVPN many times for remote users. But for site to sites, pretty much IPsec is the general way to do it when we're connecting two remote offices together. External authentication. User-based authentication is great when you have a few users, when you have a thousand users, suddenly now you're loading up the hardware on PFSense to handle the authentication as well as a VPN. This can be very taxing on the system. Therefore, uh, using an external uh, authentication server when you're talking about that many users is going to be important. Now, I have videos breaking down how to use Radius inside of PFSense, the Radius server for authentication, so you can add some more real specific things like uh, per IP address. But that radius server running on PFSense is also going to tax the hardware that's running the VPN. So yeah, 20 users, no problem. 100 users, 300 users. Well, yeah, maybe you're having a little bit more of some scaling issues. So things to keep in mind on there when you're asking, can I get the better VPN speeds? How many users do you have is going to be a little bit of a factor in there uh, for limitations. Hardware acceleration. I'll show you where to turn this on, really simple to do. This hardware I'm using, this is my virtualized lab one, does have AES and I crypto support, and yes, it's active. So this can get you a little bit more speed because for quite a number of years, processors have had this built in. So if we go here to advanced, miscellaneous, and we can turn on AES and I BSD crypto, and away we go. That will turn on that feature, and you'll be able to take advantage of it. This, I have not done any testing, uh, and even they admit it's kind of a one-off thing, but this is the kernel PTI and MDS mode can potentially degrade total performance. This is the Spectre meltdown mitigations that have been built into BSD and PFSense. And if they detect a processor, an Intel processor with those potential flaws, they will automatically enable the mitigation. So those mitigations may cost you a little bit of speed, but if you're trying to squeeze every ounce of speed out of the system, well, turning it off will definitely, uh, you know, possibly help you a little bit more. I mean, we're talking about fine tuning. So this is worth mentioning in here. Side note, what about this being less secure? As I know this obviously was uh, headlines a couple of years ago and more recently when different flaws have been found in Intel CPUs. In order for someone to exploit this, they need to be running on the same hardware. And the only thing if you're running a firewall should be your firewall software, in this case, PFSense. Therefore, someone would have to have high levels of privileges on the same hardware. It's not like you're running a virtualization stack uh, from a general hardware firewall. Obviously, running it in virtualization, that's a different issue. But if you're running it on your hardware, someone would have to have high levels of privileges to even attempt the breaking the boundaries between the processors and the cores, like the Spectre Meltdown does, and extracting data. 
if they were having that level of privileges, they would probably go the easy route in extracting data because it takes such a high level of privilege. So this is not something I think is going to be at right now that we know of any real huge risk, but may get you a little bit more performance. So I'll, I'll throw that one out there as kind of a maybe when it comes on there. And it probably doesn't make a big difference with one user, but obviously with a large scale VPN with maybe a thousand users, yes, now all of a sudden those little things might make a big difference. Make sure your tunnel network address size pool is big enough to handle the volume of users. may seem obvious, but sometimes um, it can be overlooked and you configure the VPN, but now all of a sudden it's time where many users are using it at the same time and you can't figure out why some of them can't connect, you may not have a pool size big enough. Uh, you can gain a little bit of performance going from a 256-bit key to a 128-bit key. A 128-bit key is still a very strong cipher, but you know you can still limit this because it's going to tax the processor more um, if you have it 256. So make an informed decision and understand that. Uh, they might get a little bit more speed by doing it that way. Consider split tunneling. This is huge. This is probably the one of all the links in this list in here. This one can be a really big deal. What split tunneling is, is do you want to force all the traffic? And let's go over here to the OpenVPN settings. So we go OpenVPN, edit, scroll down here. Force all client generated traffic through the tunnel. Well, this can be a problem for you. Redirected IB4 gateway traffic. So if you force all the traffic as in, if the user connects and they're not just getting local resources, you want all the traffic redirected. This is great if you want a VPN from a coffee house and have 100% of the traffic, uh, you know, tunneled in and locked into your network and things like that. But especially in the current situation we're in, where people may have a lot of other browser tabs open, they're watching a video, they have a couple news tabs open, and they want to access local resources. If you're not splitting it and letting them use their standard non-VPN connection, their standard internet connection, or all the other things they have going on, and the other one that accesses local resources, what split tunneling means. So by doing it this way, where you say, all right, we're going to uh, only say push local network resources, and if they need something local network, that goes over the VPN, but that Facebook page or whatever other pages they have for video streaming, news, et cetera, are not going over the VPN, that alone can save you quite a bit with your users because now they're not taxing. They're only going to pull what local resources they need, which leaves more resources and more bandwidth and more processing power available for local resources versus them trying to tunnel everything. Now, this is obviously, as much as the ideal thing is, have your users only VPN in, force all traffic, and they're only going to go to 100% work-related sites. That's a wonderful idea, but we live in a real world and sometimes you just don't do it. So that was a, that's one of them I'm going to say it may help you quite a bit. Now they have a lot of other little details um, about all the different phases you can do in the IPsec, a little bit of how you can set the cryptography up um, and how you can do split tunneling in air, how you can sell, scale OpenVPN and find other fine tuning they can change. The one thing I will mention, anytime you make a change in here, whether it's to the cipher or some of the other settings, you may, if you run into problems, if you change something, make sure you re-export to the client. So ideally, this is going to be something you would have done before you've deployed it, but even after deployed, uh, you may be running to scale problems. Please note, when making these changes, there may be differences. A couple of easy things you could do is download before you make the changes, then download the client again after and do a, a diff to see what may have changed in here. But some of these things like you can see all the settings right here. If you change the ciphers, there's where it says it there. Uh, if you change the auth digest TLS client, whether or not you're using it just as a client or any of those, this will get changed inside this and that will break existing users. So just something else to keep in mind is you may have to redeploy the VPN if you make any of these major changes. So keep all that in mind, uh, stay safe out there, and hopefully this helps get you the most out of the VPN, get you the best performance you can get out of there, and so you can have more users and scale up. So go through, look at the settings. I'm, I've covered this before, and so has uh, NetGate and several of their videos. And there's a they have a few at the bottom here if you want to get into that really fine-tuning thing of increasing SEM buffers, use UDP fast IO. And like they said, this is experimental options, but you can if you're really trying to fine-tune it, just don't do it during while all the other users, because any of these settings you change could disrupt current users using it. So keep that in mind as well. I'll leave a link to this so you can read this all and dive into the details. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. 
you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.